Okay, so this is just a uh, brief introduction on how to use the Epic God Rays for iRay. And this is for Daz Studio. Um, and so what we're going to do is kind of go for uh, this look here. And this is just a very basic scene, just um, one single light beam and one character and uh, one fixture. Okay, and so if I were to um, actually render this in IRA, it would be completely black, um, only because there's no lights in our scene currently. And this is um, ideal for using the God Rays, um, because the more light that you have in your scene, uh, the more it will drown out this light. Um, so what I like to usually do when I'm using these is in our uh, environment, I set the environment mode to scene only. The default is domain, domain scene, but uh, by select, uh, selecting scene only, um, that eliminates the sunlight uh, from the scene. And so as you can see, there's currently there's no light uh, in the scene. And so let's go, go ahead now and import a single prop into our scene. So we'll navigate to the props folder and to the epic god rays step one folder. Um, and for this particular demonstration we will choose directional medium. Okay and in most cases directional medium uh, will suffice. Um, and the only difference between the long, medium, and short of course is the length of the prop. And so by double clicking on um, one of the options here, it imports the prop into the scene. Okay, so after double clicking on our prop in step one, that imports uh, the prop into the scene. And as you can see, it imports two items. It imports the light, the light source, and the prop itself, okay? And so, as you can see here, um, if we want to position the prop, we select the light source to do that. Use me to position or scale prop. And this allows us to move the prop around and to um, scale it up and down um, according to our needs in the scene. Uh, but for this particular scene, we won't need to really do any of that, um, only because everything is zeroed out um, <clears throat> pretty well on the uh, X, Y, or the X and Z axis. Okay, so um, that's looking pretty good. Um, we have the prop going through our um, window here and uh, going through down to the floor. And um, in most cases, I mean, that's that will suffice for using these props. Um, you can be down here if you'd like, it can be further up. Um, as long as the prop um, fills up the window sufficiently and it can have overlap as you can see, that's, that's fine. Um, it will produce the effect that we're going for. Okay, um, now let's move on to step two. So Obviously, you know, there's geometry in the scene, but there's no textures applied to it yet. It's just kind of a blank slate. So that's what steps two, three, and four accomplish is applying uh, textures to this geometry. So we'll move on to step two. Um, and now since we chose medium uh, length, um, as you can see, prop medium, um, for step two, we want to navigate to the medium only folder and choose uh, whatever option we, we're looking for here. And we'll, we'll go with light responsive only because that um, provides uh, a little bit more realistic light. Um, I, prov I give more details in the, um, uh, in the user guide on wh what exactly is the difference between light responsive and self-illuminated. 
Um, but in most cases, you'll probably go with light responsive. And so let's choose a suitable um, look that we want to go for here. And I guess for this example, we'll simply go with clear, um, with a basic uh, medium density complexity and the color band refraction. And again, you know, if you if you want more details on exactly what all this means, there's uh, there's more details in the user guide on on the differences between these parameters. So um, now to apply the light, what we need to do is so first select the prop, okay, and then we can now double click on our light, and that applies the texture to the prop, and you'll note that nothing really changed or uh, seemed to change, and that's because we haven't completed steps three and four yet. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go to step three, go to medium only again, and we'll choose FX2. And now we'll complete uh, the step. We'll go to step four, again, medium only. And we'll choose, say, uh, dust level two. And now uh, you can see uh, that something uh, is noticeably different. Now that all the textures are applied, um, we have an actual working prop in our scene. And if I were to go to our um, camera, which is inside this um, this uh, fixture here, and if I were to render it out, it would actually render um, and give us uh, the look that we're going for. Okay, and there it is. Now we can, of course, make fine-tune adjustments um, to this um, simply by um, making sure again that our prop is selected and double-clicking on whatever changes we want, uh, whatever other textures we, we want to apply. So, for example, if let's say I wanted to change this from a natural color to maybe a purple uh, hue, so we just simply double click on that and it applies those particular textures uh, to the prop and that changes the entire look of, of the prop. And if I wanted to make individual adjustments uh, that's what these X settings here are for. So if I wanted to decrease the complexity, I can do that. Um, increase the color band refraction, I can do that. Or adjust the density. So let's say, for example, I double click on density low. And as you can see, it now makes that particular adjustment. And that's basically it. That's how you use um, the Epic God Rays for iRay. And as a final note, um, one thing we did not cover is the dispersive prop. And that gives an entirely different look. And we'll, we can cover that in a follow-up video.